Have you ever attended a risk management meeting that is dead boring and unproductive? Well, this video is about working efficiently with product safety risk management and avoiding the most common mistakes. Stay tuned. Hi, I'm Peter Sibelius, the founder of MedicalDeviceHQ.com. This video is a part of my online course on risk management for medical devices and ISO 4971. If you like this video and you have colleagues who would want to suffer less in risk management workshops, share this video in your network on LinkedIn. Let's get started. In this video, I'll be going over six useful tips on how you should be working with risk management to get the results you want. This is not so much about the regulatory requirements as it's about making the risk management work and process run smoothly. Number one, make sure you have the right competencies on board when doing risk management. What type of competencies you should have has already been covered in the general requirements lesson, but let me just reiterate that it's always a good idea to have some people with clinical knowledge and at least one person with good knowledge about the risk management process, as well as people who know the application. In addition to that, other relevant competencies, for example, relating to production or service of the device may be needed when looking at those particular life cycle phases. But it's not only about having the right competencies, it's also about harvesting the positive effects of group dynamics. You want to make sure that you set up meetings and collaborate with people you can get help from so that one plus one resource equals three. And the next tip also relates to that. Number two, when I ask course participants what they think about attending risk management workshops, I regret to say that a lot of people answer that it's dead boring. And that's not necessarily because risk management in itself is boring. It's rather the format by which many have chosen to work. What often happens is that you gather maybe a handful or more people in a room and then have a risk management workshop meeting that takes three hours or more. The problem with this is that it's very often difficult to make the meeting meaningful for every participant when it's that long. And the time spent in the meeting often ends up being spent on minor conflicts or even uh, worse, dealing with grammar or trying to spell words correctly. So please avoid big and unnecessarily lengthy meetings. You do not want to have risk management meetings where you have this many people trying to agree on the spelling of phthalates, which by the way is an awful word to spell or even pronounce. Now the solution to this problem is to have shorter sessions where you brainstorm and come up with ideas and thoughts and then after the meeting have one or two people process these thoughts and ideas and after processing the information you can either reconvene to review what's been done or even better send the results out for a document review, then collect comments and remarks and collate them and resolve the obvious things and then bring the things that require discussion back to another short meeting. This is a much better way to work if you ask me. Obviously, you need to adapt this to your situation, but by having long meetings, you will make people try to avoid risk management or they won't contribute like they should simply because they're sick and tired of being in the meeting. Don't get me wrong, risk management is a team effort, but it can still be a team effort without lengthy meetings. Number three, having talked about two long meetings, I want to add another tip. Make sure you have someone in your risk management workshops that can really lead the meeting in an effective way, because you'll find that people have a hard time coming to an agreement sometimes, or that they dig too deep and become very granular or very technical. And when that happens, it's very useful to have someone in the meeting that can either make the decision if people don't agree or uh, someone who can say, let's stop here and escalate this particular issue and people would listen to that. Sorry for being a bit cynical, but if you're working for a large company, I'm sure you've dreamt of having that kind of person present at several meetings you have attended. And it also works for risk management workshops. Number four, make sure that you create records of who's taking part in the risk management work. This is actually a requirement in the standard. You should maintain records of who did what. So start that as early as possible so you don't have to re-engineer what actually happened. A simple list with risk management meetings or reviews that outline what they addressed, when they were held and who was present should suffice to avoid non-conformities in this area. Number five, allow yourself to work forwards and backwards. The standard describes a very linear approach 
where you go from hazards to reasonably foreseeable sequences or combinations of events and so on. But it's important to know that the work is rarely as linear as it's described in the standard or in this course for that matter. So someone might even say, well, the product should be sterile long before you've thought about what the actual risk is. So that's a risk control that would be reasonable for any invasive product. Having said that, you could then go backwards and say why you want the product to be sterile and come up with all sorts of applicable risks that you try to avoid by sterilizing the product. So don't be worried if you're filling out the hazard traceability matrix in all different directions. Just make sure that everything fits together at the very end. Number six, if you're creating a brand new product, you won't have any background risk management work to start from. This will very much influence how the risk management work is carried out because everything is done from scratch. If there is a similar pre-existing product, you can consider yourself lucky. Feel free to copy text that you have in a previous hazard traceability matrix from the predecessor product. But do remember, and here is a big fat warning, the devil is in the details. So if you do copy text from a previous risk management file, be very careful when reviewing what you have copied and pasted so that you don't forget any risks or miss that the risk is different for the new version of the product. It's very easy to make this kind of mistake and we wouldn't want you to do that, right? Those were my six short tips on how to work with risk management. Even though they were brief, these tips can help you save time, money and frustration and thereby creating a better risk management file. Do you know someone who would benefit from having more efficient risk management workshops? Why not doing that person a favor by sharing this video to your LinkedIn network? People might just thank you for it. And speaking of LinkedIn, do follow Medical Device HQ on LinkedIn. There is a link to our company page in the description below. Just a reminder, if you would like to take the full course on risk management and ISO 14901, you can register for my courses through the link in the video description. Thanks for watching. I'm Peter Sibelius, and I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.